Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is the Peace Dealer and I'm very excited to bring up this super amazing concept of alien constructs. It's a special topic that I'm going to explore in full depth and this video serves as the introduction. This is based off of an amazingly written article and book that I'm going to be referencing as far as specific abilities that are uh, involved with these constructs that I'll mention. The link to this article is in the description box below and I'll also include it in the comments section as well. Um, other than that, in astrology or in the natal chart, it's possible to discern whether one has an alien construct or is an alien construct. This is done by seeing where Uranus, Neptune, Saturn, and or Pluto is in your zodiac chart. Basically any contacts with outer planets that based on if they aspect your sun, your moon, or rising can influence you as a vessel, you may inherit power from these energies or merely be an instrument. None of which is better or worse, as that all depends on you. But as you'll see in the article, there's so many more different ways to calculate uh, and derive and understand what type of alien you may be. And I think that's quite fascinating, which given the controversy behind you know correlation and causation between humans and planets this is really amazingly observable and testable in real life to see if there's anyone in your life that you know that has their moon or sun or rising directly on these outer planets you're going to really experience a, a real time like you know understanding of how these energies flow through people and of course you know depending on what generation you're born some people have these stacked and you, you end up being a more fused version of these beings but regardless i'm going to talk about mainly the vessel aliens the power aliens and also the instrument aliens uh through my experience reading like hundreds of natal charts I've noticed that people who have this were able to, you know, e express very similar experiences. Of course, in their own way, depending on zodiac sign. But yes, do you watching this? Do you have Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, or Saturn on your sun or moon or rising? Uh, it'd be also important to notice if you have personal planets or even Jupiter. This doesn't make you not an alien. I really more see this as the power granted and inherited from these, these energies. But we can safely say the other outer planets are alien because even if you were to take their vibration and put them in this civilization, it would, it would be completely foreign. You can be Venus, right? You can be Mars, you could be Mercury and still exist in a regular civilization and culture. You cannot be Uranus. No one wants to be that asshole that's just blowing up stuff in the mall. You can't be Neptune, just completely passed out. Like, these are alien, these frequencies, these energies. Uh, that's just one example as to why, other than them being trans Saturnian. But other than that, um, if you have your son, Aspected by these energies if they square or oppose that means something too But I'm only going to pay attention to the case of the conjunction where you have these direct me personally I'm a vessel alien, so I have Uranus Neptune and Saturn on my moon in Capricorn Which literally makes me a vessel for these energies to work through me. but let's say you have the Sun with these energies. You are considered a power alien. And whereas the moon people are vessels that coral this energy through them, you have direct influence and power to snap on and off at will, which when you really start to understand this, chances are many of you who have this born now 
either have this in like Libra, Virgo, and above, which means it's going to take like a good 30, 40 years to master, as opposed to the older generations who had this in Aries, Taurus, where by 15, they got it, and it's it's lit. But there's they, they don't have the peak that we have. So keep that in mind, because for those of you power aliens, life for you uh, makes you keenly aware of these supernatural concepts that it may take a few decades for you to understand that not everyone uh, sees things like you do. It's very common with Neptune suns. Uh, Neptune suns and Neptune moons can usually feel like everyone else shares into the special way they perceive reality when that is far from the truth. So let's say you have your son on uh, Neptune. This allows you ascension. And I'm referencing the article that goes more in depth to the very specific abilities you have. But when you read that, know that that's an understatement. Like you're defining this uh, in a more relevant way with the times that are gonna really blow open uh, your understanding of reality. And the reason why I'm bringing up this topic is now that we're stepping into Pluto and Aquarius, alien constructs are going to be a super real thing. So for those of you who have it, it definitely makes you distinct. Not necessarily that you're better than one who has it with a square or opposition, but the direct connection to this energy uh, makes the difference. So, you know, people with sun on Neptune, they can ascend, they can literally insert themselves in people's dreams, uh, induce inception, they, 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 they know hypnotism, and with Uranus, Sun Uranus people are able to like deprogram people, be very revolutionary, snap people back to reality, out of illusions, uh, awaken people as well as like predict future currents. Um, I'm not really gonna go into all of them, like Saturn and Pluto. And any contacts with Pluto have to do with uh, assisting those from crossing over, and Saturn has a lot to do with time manipulation and also, you know, manifesting physically anything. It's the world card. So, you know, those of you who have power over these energies can exert your spiritual awareness and your consciousness to directly use these energies. Look at anyone in your life with Sun Saturn. Mia Khalifa, 50 Cent, these are very powerful people. And a lot of that has to do with their relationship with these planets. Seen generationally, you know, especially Capricorns with these outer planet energies, they have it at the most powerful. It just takes 30 to 40 years to master. Um, this is just part one of this series. So I'm going to go into each planet and break it down. So for those of you who are interested, I'm going to break down more specifically what Saturn Moon means, Saturn Sun, Saturn Instrument, and then we'll have a special video for Pluto, and we'll, we'll have fun with this. So uh, I would like for you to comment below uh, what planets you have before you get to there. Um, if you have your moon on these outer planets, whereas the power people uh, directly inherit power, and, and they're able to control it and, and it, you know, insert their awareness. The moon people are possessed by these energies. So some people think they might be possessed by evil entities, and it's like, no, you, you, you are sharing your vessel with another whole entity. And it's not like you have the full energy of the planet. You have a portion of it that inherits with your soul. It's like having a deity soul which, with which you sacrifice or you shift your own consciousness for another energy to come through. So keep that in mind. This applies in transits too. And um, whereas the sun people are aware of this, the moon people are not always aware because this is a subconscious influence or an unconscious influence if it's like in your 12th. So keep that in mind. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes in, in, in some cases it can be better than having it with the sun, especially if you're in positions where you need to keep the power uh, hidden. You know, a sun person won't be able to hold back that, but a moon can slip in pretty sweet. It, it depends though. Um, but yeah, the moon energy makes you a vessel of these energies to where it will unconsciously move through you and certain things can happen just because you're there. Something to keep in mind, um, you're going to feel the energy of this moon more so, but we're going to break down what it means to have moon contacts here. And then don't sleep on the instrument alien. So we just, we talked about power aliens and then vessel aliens. 
don't sleep on instrument aliens. So instrument aliens are kind of like vessel aliens in the sense where they're both being like controlled to a degree. Like a, a vessel alien will get possessed, but an instrument alien becomes the instrument of the planet. For example, I'm an instrument of Mercury, so communication just flows through me. If you notice, like I mean, it's like Mercury becomes my instrument to just communicate as I please using my own, you know, physicality as a vessel. But it's way more extreme with these outer planets. No, mind you, this can also be induced and inherited through transits. So maybe you don't have, you weren't born with Moon on Pluto. Maybe you weren't born with Pluto going through the rising. But if you have a transit where that happens, you inherit that and you gain those powers even after it leaves. You may not keep them forever, but you'll still gain that experience and inherit it uh, for as long as, as it exists. But it's different than actually having a being there, which is something to keep on. So as an instrument alien, these, ex these expressions of these energies flow through your personality. And yes, if you have moon and sun in the first house, you are a power vessel an instrument if you have energies there. The, the, those are special people who have like, like let's say you're Capricorn rising, you have the outer planets uh, in your first house, even if it's not next to the AC and then the sun and the moon is there, watch out for those people. But uh, other than that, instrument aliens, whereas these planets possess your soul, as an instrument alien, it plays through your personality, and you're able to play its energy as instrumentally as well. It flows more without having to feel like you're sharing space with, uh, you know, a whole dark lord in some cases, or just like erratic energies, which it's, it's not easy for vessel aliens to contain this power because it could kind of make you feel non-human. You, you almost have to like keep a sense of your humanity uh, in check or you, you start to lose that, all right? But other than that, that's really more so uh, what many of you have signed up for. Instrument aliens are also able to kind of personify the energies so amazingly or intensely, which is really awesome too. You see it in the Pluto rising or, or Uranus rising, which are geniuses. So I'm gonna end this video here. Once again, um, comment down below your experiences. If you have this personally, comment down what sign it is. If you're a vessel alien, if you're an instrument alien, if you're a power alien, um, comment down if you know anybody who has this like that. And um, yeah, look out for more of this series where I, I go more in depth to, like, if we, to vessel alienhood, to power alienhood. Uh, into instrument alienation and I totally made those words up but y'all stay blessed and until next time I'm riding dirty with my windows down cush smoke feeling like a boss Rick Ross how the hook go uh, it skits gang everywhere when I put one in the air Sinatra a Fred Astaire like that's how I'm feeling on the mic Cooler than the motherfucker, darker than the night DA the INM, watch me power rap on everything Loyal to this game, this I promise like a wedding ring This ain't a thing, homie, my crew we do it big The focus is on point, homie, we came to win Yeah, there's no time for second place Wait, we on this paper chase, watch me start another race and you're getting more higher from this six foot lighter Bringing you more fire The Philly stay burning Mississippi real shit Ask him who the best Watch him change the subject real this quick This is the music we gon' ride to Blaze up and get high to eh. We gonna stay fly to Speakers knock it by eh. Skits gang provide you with the best eh. Excuse me as I release this great cloud from my chest eh.